authenticity, the authority, and the capability to shift whatever it is that's in you. So if you step into darkness, light be released. If you step into heaviness, joy be released. You take authority over your atmosphere. And it's not just about what happens here. This is what happens in your workplace. This is what happens in your lounge room. You know, you can walk into your, your workplace and think, man, what's going on here today? I mean, there might be confusion or it might be this or, you know, there could be all sorts of, of other thoughts going through your mind. You think, what's going on here? What's wrong with me? It's nothing wrong with you. It's in the atmosphere. And God is calling you as an ecclesia, as part of the body of Christ, as the governing body of Christ, to do something about it. Yeah. Does this make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It is not for the pastor. Praise God, I'm an apostle. It is for the body of Christ. Right. It's the same thing. You walk into a family reunion. You know, and, oh, I don't know what's going on with them. They're a bit off. What's happening here? Well, you know, what, what is the Holy Spirit saying? What is the truth? Deal with it. I hear so many Christians saying, I'm confused. I'm not sure what God wants. Um, this is heavy. That's this, that, this is, you know, all of this stuff. But I don't hear what the Holy Spirit's saying. And I need to hear what the Holy Spirit's saying. Yeah. I'm not interested in the kingdom of darkness. I'm not interested in, in any of that. I am interested in the Holy Spirit. Amen. I am interested in what He's saying. I am interested in the truth that He wants to show me. But I do not want to pick up on anything that the kingdom of darkness is releasing. Really Does this make sense? Yeah. Yeah. So this is, this is for all of us because we are apostolic prophetic. We are the ecclesia. We are the body of Christ, the governing body of, of Christ of God upon the earth. And this is comes under your authority and your responsibility. It is not up to the pastor because that, that wasn't in Acts anyway. You have the authority, the responsibility, the power you have the discernment of the Holy Spirit. You have the truth yeah. to do whatever it is that God has called you to do. Yes. And that means shift atmospheres if you have to. Mm -hmm. That means to uproot things that are not of God. Right. You don't take on principalities and powers until there's a group. But you do step into the situation and think, you know what, there's something not right here. So whatever it is, Holy Spirit, show me what you want to do. Show me what you want established and establish that. Does this make sense? Yes. So this is a chance now because we're moving from pastoral, churchy, to apostolic authority. So this is a chance for us all to grow up into and step out in. Because every place that the sole of your foot treads, God gives it to you. Yes. Every place. There is nothing that can resist the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Nothing. So this is part of who you are. Amen. This is part of your authority, your power, your ability, because we are part of the ecclesia, the called out ones. And that word ecclesia, Jesus said, I am, I am building my ecclesia. I am building the called out ones, yes. the ones that are, will release the government of God upon the earth. That's what you're called to do, release the government of God upon the earth. So if there's sickness, you release health. Yes. If there's chaos, you release order. If there's frustration, you release fulfillment. But you recognize who you are. Because quite often we live out of our emotions. And we live out of our emotions. You know what, I really pick up a spirit of this. And, think, oh. and then you, you sink into your emotions. Oh man, I don't want to come here if that's going to be like that. Or I don't want to, you know, it affects us. Well, it should not affect you. It should not affect you because you are a spirit being. First and foremost, a spirit being. You have a soul. You live within a body. or well, The body lives within the spirit, however you want to put it. But you're a spirit being. And so we've got to live out of the spirit, not out of the emotions. So whatever you discern, discern. Whatever you, you, you deal with it. But do not allow it to affect you emotionally. Shake it off does not belong to you. It's not part of who you are in Christ. Jesus was tired and he got hungry, but he was never depressed. He contended for the faith. He released the kingdom of God everywhere he went. 
and this is his model is is what we model ourselves after. Yeah. Any questions? End of long talk. But we need to sort of, as we're shifting into the apostolic, we need to see some things. Yeah. Can I just say something I'm really excited about? Um, this is our time, and the Lord is showing me, this is a, a real time transition for a lot of, for a lot of us. This is a real time of transition for a lot of us into new wineskins. And so you're going to feel the pulling and the stretching. And sometimes the things that you're feeling, so that God can put a spotlight on to say this is no longer necessary. That this is part of the old wineskin, the old track of thinking. And part of it is the shaking. Remember there was a word that came from the Lord that there was a shaking of waking. And there would be love of truth being poured out. God is, God is doing something to give us understanding of one, where we are, who we are, whose we are, so that we, so that we can let go more quickly yeah. of the things that are no longer necessary to be part of our makeup. We don't have to own them. They're not, it's not us. And, and like um, Apostle Suzette was saying, it's like we're, we're carriers of the most high God. And I had this impression of us <laughs> when you put the light switch, God let the facts come on. <laughs> We're light. The enemy is to be fearful of us. They're to be afraid. When we come, you see how many of us are in this room? And we're in agreement and we come on this, this property. Two people put 10,000 to flight. Yeah. Look at how many of us are in this room. Yeah. The enemy should be so scared <laughs> whenever we rock up here. Thank you. 
This is why I need my book to be put into the room. <laughs> get there, the lady who had arranged to pick me up, not there, 20 minutes on gate, it's twilight, I'm in a place, don't know anyone. And um, she said, uh, I got on the phone to her and she said, oh no, I'm down in Victoria, this is thousands of miles away. I'm down in Victoria, I'm in the Ministry of Business, I thought, did it try this number? So I phoned her this number, I ended up at the, the treetop lodge, which was a missionary sent out centre. And they graciously put me up, took a taxi from the train to get there, they put me up in unit number eight. I like the number eight. Resurrection power and resurrection new beginnings. So a couple of days there, the next day I went up to Coranda. Excuse me. First assignment was up the hill of this treetops missionary centre. And they had with much effort put a great big cross on the side of the mountain. And so when I went up there I knew the next day I was to do my first assignment there and five o'clock in the morning, whatever, I'm up the mountain and I'm on my knees and I'm weeping and I have a veil over my head and I'm asking forgiveness for the sins of the people, transgressions, so on, and the generations covered in Jesus' name, poured out the oil of my soul. This was the first place. I left a healing cloth there and put across Jesus heals. Short. I had an accident halfway up the mountain 
mission board back down here to the Gold Coast. Next time I flew up to Cairns, then I went straight up to Mariba by bus. That was interesting, getting up there, way up there, and somebody on me there. Okay, got up there, went up to Herberton, means two rivers. So I'm up there and I'm praying, giving me a sign of two rivers to flow out of Herberton. This is up on the Atherton Tablelands, to flow down to Atherton, down to Tolga. Tolga's going to be a place of visions and dreams. And then back to Mariba. Mariba is going to be a place where revival fires will be released in this nation. Yes. Eshe Bahaya will flow down to Cairns and then it will come back down the coast. Um, I had five minutes stops on the train coming back uh, from, from Brisbane to the Gold Coast. Five minutes stops. I didn't have time to do the full thing, but I did have my oil and my wine and salt mixed in a little container. So when we had a five minute stop, I'd be into the toilets and now. Back on the train. And I did that at um, Townsville and Funderburg, two places where we had five minutes stop. Back to Brisbane, back with all my luggage again. Do -do 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 -do. Went up to Roma Street Station and did a pour out there for Brisbane. Back here, next to Simon was New South Wales. I went down to Tweed Heads, found the place at the back of the school there somewhere. Then down to Byron Bay. That was interesting. Byron Bay is going to be, it, it's going to be known for worship in this nation. It will be a silly thing. It will be just revival really worship there. And I always had to have um, no, no, well, I couldn't have rain for me when I'm doing this assignment. And I had fine weather everywhere. I went everywhere, mostly. But when I went in a, I'm driving down to Byron Bay, it started to pour, oh, absolutely. Oh, great. Right. It's about half an hour before I'm getting into Byron Bay. And I'm driving, oh, look, this is not on. In the name of Jesus, I command you, the clouds dissipate in the name of Jesus, blue cloud, clouds appear. It will be a clear sky in Jesus' name. So that's exactly what happened. It started to break and stop. I saw the blue opening. I'm driving into to do it at the lighthouse. And so I go down all the stairs there, you know the place. And they had landings that we could watch out the whales. And the whales were flipping over backwards in the distance. And everyone's there taking their camera. And I'm looking over here and I'm thinking, I could have died in that bush over there somehow. So I'm waiting for them all to be looking out there, taking a shot of the whales. And I dive into the bushes now. Down, 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 and I'll find a place. Pour out the oil and wine there. Yes, yes. So that was an incredible thing. I thought, my camera saved me on a few occasions. I thought, if I come out of here and anyone's walking along the path and they look at me coming out of the, I shouldn't be on that area, <laughs> in their gardens or wherever. So I'd come out with my camera to the skylight and some paper photos. <laughs> The incredible thing was, there was a rainbow, you must listen to this, there was a rainbow, I love the rainbows, coming of God, he's a coming keeping father. The rainbow started here in the north and extended right in the clouds, right over at the end of the south. And the father spoke to me and he said, my covenant shall be extended throughout this nation, yeah. from the north to the south. I'm coming back, uh, driving back, I get to Kira, there's a glory sunset. I'm just drawn to it. I've got to get out of the beach, I'm walking towards it, I'm taking photos of the glory sunset. And I'm just enjoying the moment and praising God. And he says, turn around. I turn around like this and there's a rainbow going from the sea over to the land. And that's when the Lord's been missing. From the north to the south, from the east to the west. My covenant will be extended through it. So the next assignment was uh, Sydney and then Canberra. Did those two areas, headed into the botanical gardens in both areas. Same thing. After that, Hobart and Melbourne. Canberra, by the way, minus one. Minus <laughs> one. That was okay. Hobart's a bit better. It was eight degrees. So I did 
in the, the Lord Tasmania Botanical Gardens and found big, oh, big cypress trees at the heavy new home there and big consignment there in Tasmania. Flew back to Melbourne. I, I couldn't go anywhere specific. I only had a certain amount of time before the flight. The, the plane flew back to the um, Gold Coast. Heard about half an hour, three quarters of an hour up my sleeve. And I was looking everywhere around the gap. airport. I was like, God, where can I do this? And there was a bit of a rocky garden out the entrance way with a few cactus growing on it. So on these occasions, I go into the toilet and I do the basics in there. Then I go out and I just pour the oil and the vapor or whatever is there. Thank you. Back up here, next trip was to Uluru. Flew out to Uluru, and I've already shared part of that. Then I went um, at the bus. Alice Springs. That was a long journey, all the way to sitting up on the bus. And most, most of my stayovers were at that, the Y, 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 <laughs> then I'll be out at 4 o'clock in the morning on my way to catch the next bus train, whatever it was. So Catherine was an incredible place. Um, stayed with an indigenous uh, missionary centre there. The, the guy had just got back off the two, three week mission trip and I'm there and I, I just said, um, I've got to get to WA tomorrow. It's a six hour journey by car and he's looking around at what vehicle might go or get there and he's just walking off the mission field and I found him up and I said, I've just arrived. So he greeted me graciously and he drove me to WA the next day. Incredible guy. And we went to Kananara, in, um, went up the mountain. He came up with his chauffeur, I could put the sign up on the top in the rocks on the mountain. Six hour drive back to Catherine. Halfway through at Timber Creek, we stopped and there was an Aboriginal couple having a ministry. And there's a young guy that's just the mum and the dad and the, the, their son. He's in his 20s. Well, he went like this all night and he said, I, I did, I was dead. God raised me up. This is all we can talk about. I died again. Jesus raised me up. I think it was two or three times he had died, and that's all his testimony is. I died and Jesus raised me up. Incredible. <laughs> and the guy is saying in Catherine, oh yeah, I've died a couple of times for heart, and, and Jesus raised me up. These are the sort of people God's going to use. Yeah. 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 The Aboriginals. The Aboriginals, I call them sometimes Indigenous Aboriginal. They love to be called Aboriginal. The ones I've been to. They love to be referred to as Aboriginal. Um, so, praise the Lord, up to Darwin and back. And my last assignment was down to Adelaide. Incredible move of God down there. there are, I got ushered into the Apostolic uh, Arena where they have a, a apostles coming in from different churches around the place to go to this particular church. I never think of the name of it. But anyway, uh, it, it was a good God connection there. And uh, I was able to do the assignment there as well. So I was still trying to write the book. <laughs>
It's, um, you know, like in that apostolic church arising thing, it talks about freedoms, freedom posts, freedom centres. The apostolic brings freedom. So there needs to be a divine alignment in here between the apostolic, the prophetic, and the cornerstone of Jesus Christ. So we don't want actually words as such, you know, like praise God for, for Brent last week, Greg and Joan Hood next week, very prophetic uh, and very kingdom minded. But when the, what we want is the prophets who are saying, this is what I see God doing in the spiritual realm, and then the apostolic and the ecclesia then land it. You know, we don't want words for the church as such. We want to know what God is doing and bring it through. Fair enough. Yeah. So um, we just bless God <coughs> and we bless Cherry. Yes. Yeah. And we seal her journeys yes. throughout this land. Yes. And we seal it with the seal of the Holy Spirit. And we call forth great fruit, great fruit, great fruit. Yes. That, that revival will come to this land. That yes. fire will be poured out. That this land will be redeemed north to south, east to west. That the power of Christ's redemption would flow through this nation. That the redemptive power, the redemptive separation of Jesus Christ would separate the light from the darkness. That, Father God, there would be a move of salvation in every home, every city, every town, every village. That, Father, there would be a release of salvation, a release of your power, a release of your presence. That the knowledge of the glory of the Lord will fill this land in Jesus' name. And that this land will be a sheep nation for the glory of God and for the good of people. Amen. never God's intention, that you would be defeated, that you would fail, that things would be hard. That's not God. That's not a heart of a father who sets his kids up for life, for an abundant life through his son, Jesus Christ. And so I want you to, to this is the shift, because in the church thing, it's a different kind of mentality. But in the apostolic house, it's one of victory. It's one of we win. We always triumph in Christ Jesus. We're more than conquerors. We are overcomers. And if you want to turn to 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. And this is the victory we have in Christ, oh, even right. after Because I haven't even, um, you know, why I'm going to put For everyone born of God is victorious. I've got the answer for five. Everyone born of God is victorious and overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has conquered and overcome the world, our faith in Jesus. This is the victory that overcomes our faith. And so I want you to recognize and to understand that your faith is the key to victory. That your faith is the victory that gets you the, the kingdom of heaven on earth. That your faith is the very thing that unlocks the situations and circumstances that you go through so that you overcome. So that you conquer, so that you live according to the dictates and the plans and the purposes of God. But we've got to come to a place where you know what? You do not accept defeat. You do not accept failure. It is unacceptable. Now there will be character training, character pruning and all that kind of joyful stuff that comes. But when you look at the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 to 14, everything is blessed. We've got a better covenant, a more sure guarantee. We've got the promises through Jesus, the power of his blood, the authority of his name. How much more blessed is that? So we've got to start looking at areas of our life that don't measure up to the promises of God and say, you know what? That's unacceptable. That is totally unacceptable. Because I have been redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Psalm 107 verse 2, I've been redeemed. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even my faith. And everyone who is born of God, is that everyone in this room? Yes. Then you are victorious. Simply because of who you have been born from and, and the family you've been born 
born into, the fact that Christ is living in you, you are victorious. So you don't accept anything less. So in the church culture, we have accepted less. But that's not the will of God. God never planned defeat. Like, I love Morris Cirillo. Awesome little bouncy, half Jew, born again, spirit filled, on fire preacher of the gospel. I was in meetings with him and he's just preaching the word and people are getting out of wheelchairs and walking. People are getting healed just by the power of the word that he's releasing through, through his mouth. It was incredible. But he was in a foreign country as he goes into all sorts of weird, wonderful third world countries. And um, he walks out of his tent and he's a whole array of soldiers. And he went, oh, praise God. Look what God has sent to defend me and look after me in this country. They were there to arrest him. <laughs> but he already had the mindset, well, they're there for me. They're there for me. And, and he sort of walks through all these kinds of situations because that's the mindset. That's the belief. That's the faith that he has. The faith that overcomes the world is the victory. First John 5, Lord. So with the faith, what is so important about faith? Well, it's the only thing that will cause you to please God. Hebrews 11, 6. And we've talked about this. But there is a different thing that you need to understand. And in Romans chapter 3, verse 29, it says that faith is a law of the kingdom. It's a law. So we belong to the kingdom of God, right? It's kingdom citizens. In Australia, as an Australian citizen, there are laws that I must keep. Or I face the consequences. If I don't keep the, if I if I drink while I drive, then there are consequences if I'm caught. And you know it's fines or you demerit points or you lose your license or it might even be jail if there's an accident. But there are there are consequences to breaking the law. What we don't fully get is in the kingdom of God there are laws, and if we break those laws, there are consequences. It's not that God is, is vengefully after us, but we have removed ourselves from His protection. You've got to understand the laws of the kingdom of God. So there's the law of faith, there's the law of love, there's the law of sowing and reaping, there's the law of confession. There's so many different laws in the, in the law of the time. There are laws in the kingdom, and if as kingdom citizens, we don't keep those laws. We actually get consequences. So one of the most important laws is the law of faith, because without faith, it's impossible to please God. The law of faith brings the government of God upon the earth. Any time that you live by the law of a kingdom, you release the government of that kingdom upon the earth. So the law of faith releases God's government. What is God's government when the law of faith is released? Sick are healed, the dead are raised, mountains are moved, the impossible becomes possible, finances come, Opportunities open up, doors open up. All of these things happen when the law of faith is released. Or we live according to the law of faith. We come under the governance of the law of faith. So in Australia as a citizen, I come under the governance of the law that says you must not drink and drive. So I surrender to that law. I come under the governance of that law. And that gives, me, that gives me the right to drive my car anywhere I want, to do anything I want on the road within the law, right? There is a protection in that. And if somebody breaks the law and, and uh, I have a car accident or something, I am protected by the law because I have submitted to the law. Are you with me? Yes. The law of faith works exactly the same way. You must be submitted to the law of faith so that the government of God can be released upon the earth in the situation you are believing God about. You with me? So let me tell you something else about the law of faith. Faith is a person. And his name is Jesus. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 says that Jesus is the author and the finisher of our faith. Jesus, the man, the son of God, the son of man. My faith, or the faith that I live by, has its origin, it has its beginning in Jesus, and it has its end in Jesus. Therefore, faith is about a relationship. 
It's not about what we do. It's not about, you know, I'm unbelieving and I'm confessing the word or anything like that. Faith actually is a relationship. Because it has its beginning and its end in a man. Son of God, Son of Man, Jesus Christ. Faith is a relationship with Jesus. So in Matthew chapter, tw- uh, chapter 7, Jesus uh, is standing by the lake of Genesaret and the people crowding around him and the people were listening to the word of God and he saw the two boats and he got into one of the boats, Luke 5.3, which was Simon's and asked him to put out a little distance from the shore and he sat down and began teaching the crowds from the boat. And when he finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and lower your nets for a catch. And Simon replied, Master, we have worked hard all night but at your word, I will, at your word, because he knew the man, because he had a relationship with Jesus, because he trusted him, because there had been a mix. So quite often what we do is we step out in what we think is faith, but we don't have a relationship with Jesus in that area. So you might be believing God for finances, and you know that he is your provider, you know that you know he's Jehovah Jireh, your provider. But you've never had an encounter with Jesus Christ as your provider. You don't know him in that way. There is no relationship with him as your provider, but you're believing for the provision and you're confessing the word and you're standing by faith that there is no relationship with Jesus. We need to have an encounter with him so that the revelation can flow from him so that we can actually step out in the law of faith and cause the government of God to come down and change the situation. 
situation because faith releases the government of God. Faith releases the government of God, which brings the impossible to the possible. Is everyone okay with this? You've all gone quiet. But it's about a relationship. It is not about, oh, that's a promise. I'm going to claim that promise. You need to know him in the promise. He is the promise. You know, I, I used to spend hours quoting the word, confessing the word, I'm believing God for this, and, you know, but in Jesus' name, blah, blah, blah. And I would spend that time, but I didn't know him in that area. How much easier would it have been if I said, Jesus, I just want to encounter you as my healer. I want to know you as a healer. And then when I get the revelation, I can step out in faith and it's easy. And the government of God is released upon the earth. And death and destruction and sickness goes. And health and healing and wholeness is established. We need to know Him. And when we know Him, faith flows. Faith flows. And it releases government. Faith releases the government of God. In Matthew chapter 7, Jesus, or 5 to 7, Jesus is talking and he gives the whole Beatitudes. You know, blessed are, blessed are, blessed are, and all of that awesome stuff. You need to read it. I'm going through it. But principles to live by. And at the end of it, it says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 29, that the people were astonished because he taught with such authority. When you teach with authority like Jesus did, governments change in the atmosphere. So Mudjuriba, where we used to have our meetings, Mudjuriba meant a place where lies are told. So any time a lie is spoken in Mudjuriba, it aligns with the principality and the power over that area. That's why truth is so important in Mudjuriba, because the more the truth is told, the more the truth is preached, the more the truth is released, the principality and the power loses control and the government of God is released. So you've got to know what you are facing. What are you facing? Like I said before, you know, you can come here and say, oh, there's a heaviness. Well, it might be something that the spirit of, of darkness has told you. Might not necessarily. I used to have coffee with a guy. Um, he's going to be with the Lord now, but we'd be having coffee. And he would say stuff like, oh, just like hit the spirit of witchcraft. Oh, mind control is having a go. And I am sitting there having coffee and I'm thinking, well, I'm living in a bubble. Because <laughs> okay. nothing's hitting me, you know, and then all the way through every, every couple, oh, mind control. Oh, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. And, you know, it'd be this or it'd be that. And I'm thinking, what's going on? You know? But he could not ever tell me what the Holy Spirit was doing. And that was an open door for demonic spirits to land in his life. You need to know what the Holy Spirit is doing. You need to know what the Holy Spirit is saying. You need to know him more than you know about spirits of heaviness and spirits of oppression and everything else. Because the Holy Spirit's going to say, enter into a time of joy. Or the Holy Spirit's going to say, release the light. Or the Holy Spirit's going to say, I want you to dance before me. Or the Holy Spirit's going to give you the strategy. But he's not going to weigh you down with the burden. He's going to say, Here's the solution. Release that, you know. So yeah, it's good to be discerning and it's good to pick things up, but it's good to know that it's the Holy Spirit that's telling you that and not a spirit of darkness. Because the Holy Spirit will also bring the solution. The Holy Spirit will also bring the freedom. The Holy Spirit brings the truth. The Holy Spirit is awesome. And so in Matthew chapter 7, verse 29, they said, wow, we haven't heard anyone, not even the scribes, teach like Jesus because he teaches as one who has authority. And faith is your authority. Faith is your authority because faith changes government in the spirit realm. Faith changes situations, circumstances. It moves mountains. Sickness becomes health. Death becomes life. Faith changes everything. Faith is an authority. 
And when you walk in a spirit of faith, people might say things like, oh, you're a bit arrogant. Who do you think you are? But it's the confident knowing that Jesus Christ himself is doing something on your behalf, that he is uh, favoring you, that he's already given you the victory because the victory belongs to Jesus, that, you know, health belongs to Jesus, yes. prosperity belongs to Jesus, wisdom belongs to Jesus. And as we flow in unity with him, things happen. So in Matthew chapter 8, the first thing we have is the, the leper who comes to Jesus and says, I know you can clean, you know, you can heal me, but are you willing? So the first thing Jesus says, I'm willing. The next thing is you have the centurion's servant. And the centurion's servant is lying there and the centurion says, hey, you don't need to come to my house because I know you just need to say a word. I understand authority. I say to my soldiers, go here and they go there, do this and they do that. I say, come here and they come here. I understand authority. I understand how authority works. So you don't need to come to my place. You just need to say the word. That's faith. Faith takes control. Faith releases God's government. So between chapter 8 and chapter 10, there are 10 areas because Matthew is awesome. Matthew is a gospel that has groupings. Mark has snapshots. Mark's like individual photos. Luke is a story. Jesus, uh, John is something spiritual. But Matthew has groupings. So between Matthew chapter 8 and Matthew chapter 10, there are 10 groupings of miracles that Jesus did where he released his fame. So one of them was over the leper who wanted to be healed. The other one was over the centurion servant. We have the woman with the issue of blood. Uh, we have, let me just... Peter's mother-in-law who had a fever and then he healed many others around her. He stilled the storm. The demoniacs of the Gadarenes were delivered and set free. The man a paralytic was healed. A woman with a hemorrhage was healed. The ruler's daughter was raised from the dead. Two blind men were given sight and a dumb demoniac was delivered and healed. All between Matthew 8, 1 and verse chapter 9, verse 34. Ten things, ten things where Jesus released faith and things happened. When um, he stilled the storm and then went on to the Gadarenes, which is Matthew chapter 8, verse 23 to 34, where he stilled the storm, that was the principality and the power over that area trying to stop him from getting to the Gadarenes. When he got to the Gadarenes and set them free, the pigs were drowned in the pool. The, the principality of that area was completely overturned. Yeah. But it was all done by faith. So you've got to understand that faith is not just confessing the scripture. Faith is having a relationship with Jesus Christ in the area of, of where you're believing for the breakthrough. You need to know him as your healer, your provider, as your businessman. You need to know who he is because your faith begins in Jesus and it ends in Jesus. Which means it's got to flow through you. He's in you. So the faith of Christ flows through you. Changes the government's that you're living in, brings miraculous results, moves mountains, does whatever it's required to do, the glory goes back to the Father and ends in Jesus and then it goes again. It goes like that. It flows through Jesus in you, out through you, achieves what you want, comes back to Jesus because it all comes out of relationship. Is this making sense? You are meant to walk in supernatural power and authority every minute of the day. You are meant to be successful, prosperous, healthy. You are meant to achieve God's assignment for your life. You are meant God wrote it all out. He didn't plan any, anything. There might be character sorting out adjustments and whatever. But it all flows through Jesus. Now Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 in the King James
lives in me. And the life that I now live in the body, I live by faith, by adhering to, relying on, and completely trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. That's the Amplified, but the King James says, the life that I now live in the body, I live by the faith of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I live by His faith. It's not my faith, it's His. His faith. Did His faith ever fail? No. So we live by the faith of the Son of God. So in the um, passion, because it's all about relationship. If we think that it's not, we're kidding ourselves. And I don't know how come we've removed faith from our relationship and made it something we do instead of something that we live with Christ through. So Galatians chapter 2 verse 20 says, My old identity has been co-crucified with the Messiah and no longer lives. For the nails of his cross crucified me with him. And now the essence of this new life is no longer mine. For the anointed one lives his life through me. We live in union as one. My new life is empowered by the faith of the Son of God who loves me so much that he gave himself for me and dispenses his life into mine. Yes. He dispenses his life Woo. into us. Woo. When you get a revelation of Galatians 2.20, man, I tell you, everything changes because it's no longer we who live. I've been nailed to the cross, but I've also been raised up with him and I'm ascended with him and I'm seated in heavenly places with him and I live with a supernatural life and I live from the power of an endless life and I live through the power of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Son of Man and I live with a faith that cannot be defiled. I live with a faith that cannot fail. I live with the fruit of the relationship with him where I step into faith but it's his faith that's not mine because it begins and it ends in Jesus. I live by the fruit of the Holy Spirit and one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is faith. And so this whole thing without faith, I can't please the Father, but I can't please the Father without a relationship with the Son. Because God so loved the whole world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So what we've done is, as a church, generally speaking, we've separated faith from a relationship. You just have to believe. You just have to trust Him. You just have to, you know, confess the Scriptures. Whatever it might be that you've been taught in whatever church you've attended. But I'm telling you right now that the only faith that works freely, graciously, easily, supernaturally and miraculously is the one that comes from your relationship with Jesus Christ. It is not about believing, you know, believing Jesus. No, it's not about that. You are releasing His life through yours. You're releasing him yes. through you. Yes. That's what it's about. Yes. In reality, you know, we're pretty good looking corpses. Because <laughs> we're dead, guys. Yes. I have been crucified with Christ. My earth suit's just holding me together. I've been crucified with him. Yes. I no longer live. My flesh thinks it does. My flesh resurrects, you know, like I'm back. But you know, but that's not the truth. The reality is, the truth is, I am a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. I am something that has never, ever, ever been before. There is brand new. Nothing. You've not been restored. You're not replacing anything. You are a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. You have been made one with God through the through the Spirit, through Jesus, and what He did on the cross. You are brand new. You are brand. New. So your spirit has been regenerated. Your spirit's been resurrected. You are connected with God. But it's the soul that is in the process of being renewed. Right? We've got to renew our mind. James chapter 1 verse 21 says, So where we get hindered, where we, get, where we find a bit of a struggle, is with the soul or with the flesh. So James 1, 21 says, Get rid of all uncleanness and all that remains of wickedness. And with a humble spirit, receive the word of God, which has been planted and actually rooted in your heart, which is able to say, 
in your soul. So my soul is in the process of being saved. As much as I renew, as much as I lay aside the wickedness, my soul is being renewed. And my flesh will always be an enemy to God. Yeah, that's right. Right? There is no way that my flesh and God will ever even come to a truce. So I've got to see myself as dead. You know, it doesn't matter who says what to me, dead. We wouldn't believe that this week, but anyway. You know, but that's that we are dead. We've we, we been crucified with him. And you are to live by his life and his faith. So recognize when the flesh resurrects. Recognize where the soul needs to be renewed because that will stop be a barrier and hinder the flow of Jesus Christ's faith flowing through you, which brings changes and miracles and everything. Mm. Faith is about a relationship. It is not something we do. It is something we live. The just shall live by faith. And the only way we can live by faith is a relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We all know in this room that we're born again, right? Yeah. No, no, we're going to heaven? Yes. No, I know. How many of us are 100% certain that you live in divine health? How many of us are 100% certain that you can live in divine prosperity. How many of us are 100% certain that you've got the mind of Christ and the wisdom of God? These are the same things that came in the salvation package, but we're not sure about health because, hey, my back's killing me. The doctor said this, the x-ray shows that, you know, this is what I'm feeling, blah, blah, blah. The same with the prosperity. The bank statement says this, I've got so much debt. Yet it was all dealt with at the cross. So why is it that we only accept part of the salvation package? Because our soul still has to be renewed. And because for years and years and years we have assessed things by our intellect, by our logic, by our reason, by the way our parents live, by the way we've been brought up. Instead of completely diving into the promises of God and saying, you know what, I'm dead. Yeah. Wow. Yes. I'm dead, but I'm alive with him. And glory to God, that means everything changes. Because when Jesus comes on the scene, everything changes. Yes. Everything changes. The minute Jesus walks into our heart, everything changed. We might not have seen it, we might not have received it, we might not even have understood it, but when Jesus comes on the scene, everything changes. Everything. And even the government of our lives changed. We're no longer under the kingdom of darkness, but we came under the government of God, God's good government. Our government changed. Our kingdom changed. Our citizenship changed. Everything changed. So the reason I ask is why on earth, and I'm asking this of me as well, why on earth are we settling? For where we are, then should, we should be so on fire for Christ, such a hunger for his presence, so thirsty for the oil and the wine of the Holy Ghost that nothing else matters. Nothing else matters. I don't give a rip what's happening on the block. Although the mentalists can't get me. <laughs> but you know what I'm you know, honest. But you know, we've got to get to this place where we're so hungry for Jesus. Yeah. Right? I mean, if I'm crucified with him and he's now living through me, why do I want to shut it off? Yeah. Why do I want to think naturally when I can allow his wisdom to flow through me and give me divine solutions for earthly challenges and, and give me solutions for work which would cause promotions and all sorts of things to happen? Why on earth would I live in a life that is so far below what he died and rose again to give me? The faith of God can cause us to rise up and live a resurrected spiritual life where we can walk in the fullness of everything he's got, where we release the government of God upon the earth, where we can change atmospheres and, and situations the minute we walk into a room because of who is with us, because we're in him and he's in us. And when it says in John chapter 17, when God says, you know, when Jesus says that, that God the Father loves us as much as he 
loves Jesus. Why on earth do we hold back? Why? When God says, I love you so much, I let him die for you. And not only that, but I love you as much as I love him. And the same glory that God gave Jesus, he's given to us. Man, we should be light bearers going down the street. Glory carriers. I don't know what you want to call us, but you have the ability, the capacity, the power, the faith, the Christ within to change everything. And I know that people say they have free will. But I also know a God who knows how to push people's buttons. <laughs>
when you walk out your plan, your purpose, your will, your destiny in God, you bring heaven to earth. There are people waiting for some of us, waiting for us to step into what he's called us to be and to do, but we hold back because, well, I can't see how financially it's going to fit, or I don't quite see what he's calling me to do, or... I don't know what you want, you know, and I'm frustrated, I'm fed up, I'm, I'm over it. Yeah, let the fed up anointing kick in and just say, you know what, I am over anything except the will of God. That's all I want. I'm not going to receive the blindness of the devil anymore. I'm not going to receive the limitations of the natural. I'm not going to let finances dictate what I can and cannot do. I am going to obey God. I'm going to live by the faith of Jesus Christ. I'm going to have a relationship with him, encounters with him, because I'm going to release the government of God upon the earth. I'm going to step into the ecclesia. I'm going to be one who brings change upon the earth. I'm going to be one who releases heaven upon the earth. I'm going to be one who walks with Christ in such a way that I'm not seen. I'm not heard, but Jesus Christ is. This is what he's called us to. And this is faith. And faith is knowing him. Faith is knowing him. Sometimes I think that God is more frustrated with me than I am with him. Like Suze, come on girl, really, seriously, why aren't you further ahead than now? But there's no frustration in heaven. This is a time for radical. Yeah, it is. It Honestly, is. radical. Thank you, God. Dive into the Word of God. Dive into prayer. And if you're not much at praying and you only pray, you know, five minutes a day, just make it seven. Up it to ten. But do something. Say, God, I'm serious. You know what? I'm going to give up the mentalist. What did I just say? <laughs> but I'm going to give this up, God, because I'm going to have that time with you. I will listen to CDs. I'll pray in tongues. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. But God, I can't live with this anymore. I can't live with this anymore. I can't live this far below what you called me to be, to do, and to have. I know that you placed a seed of greatness in everyone here, that you called everyone in this room to something amazing for your kingdom, something amazing for your glory. God, we don't want to settle. We don't want to feel like we're established. We don't want to be comfortable. We want to be forerunners. We want to be at the front. We want to release heaven upon earth. We want to be glory rendered, radical followers of Jesus Christ, living by the faith of Christ, bringing heaven to earth. It's not going to make the shores. 
I'm over it. I'm over ongoing legislation. I'm over a land where, where farmers are, are walking off and committing suicide because there's no rain, where God has promised rain for the just and the unjust. I'm over it. I'm over not seeing the effect of prayers. Because we prayed and we prayed and we prayed about the same sex agenda. We prayed and we prayed and we prayed about the abortion thing. And we didn't get the answers we were expecting. So something has to change. So it's got to be us. It's got to be us. We have to change. We have to do things different. We have to hear from the Holy Spirit. We have to get a strategy. You have to realize that you're dead. That you are a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. That you are brand new. That every part of you can come into the fullness of Jesus Christ. Because it's no longer you who live. But it's Christ who lives in you. It's Christ who lives in you. And you live by His faith. The faith of the Son of God. You've got the power. You've got the authority. You've got everything that you need to make a change and make a difference. You know, when you walk into places and you bless it with whatever it is that you want. So I walk into to, to where I live, renting, want my own home. God, I just really thank you for the privilege of living in this home. I pray for the landlord, but I just want to remind you that he is not the Lord of the land. You are. And I thank you, Lord, that you've got a home for me. You've got a venue for Open Heaven Ministries, and I call it into being in Jesus' name. I thank you for where I am, but I thank you I'm not staying here. I thank you that it's a journey. And all of us have got things that we desire, things that we're hungry for, things that dreams and desires that we put on the shelf and we go, it's never going to happen, I don't have the money, I can't see how it's going to work out, oh surely, you know, like I've missed the boat, we've got all of these things that God has dropped in our heart over the years and we've put them away because of expectations of other people, because we didn't think we could do it, because the money wasn't there, we couldn't see how it would happen, the door wouldn't open, we've got all of these excuses, but the thing is... You are a brand new creation in Christ Jesus. Every place the soul of your foot treads, God gives it to you. You've got the wisdom of God and the mind of Christ. You can hear from the Holy Spirit. You know the voice of the Good Shepherd. You know that He's opened doors for you, that He's the favor of God surrounds you, grounds you, and covers you like a shield. And you know that He has not called you to live at the level that we're living at because that's not His will, His plan, or His purpose. He never wrote that in your book. And so it's time. Yes, that's right. Where we say, okay, God, I don't know what radical looks like, but I'm available for radical. Yeah, I am. I am. I'm not quite sure what it looks like to step into what you're calling me to do, but here I am. I'm not quite sure how you're going to fund it. I'm not quite sure where the money's coming from. I'm not quite sure how situations are going to change, but I say, yes, God. I say, yes. And I release the faith of God that lives in me because of Jesus Christ. I release the faith of God into this situation and this circumstance to change the government, to bring it under the government of God, to bring it into the goodness of God, and to release the will of God for my life. Because it's not about us. It's about His kingdom. And it's about good brother people. And in following His will, you are good. You are blessed. And all of the things in your heart that frustrate you, get you angry, get you upset, sort of think, oh, oh. you know, when we put on a good face and we come to church, I call it the plastic charismatic. How are you? Blessed. I'm blessed. You know, and inside I'm screaming. We've all been there. We've all done it. But that's because we're not living the way he's called us to live. Now I'm not saying there won't be problems, there will be. But you've got the answer because his name is Jesus. I'm not saying there won't be challenges, there will be. But you've got the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm not saying that there won't be obstacles in your way, there will be. But you've got the authority that is in the name of Jesus. And his name is all authority in heaven, on earth and under the earth. This is the freedom that he's calling us to. So I'm just going to pray a corporate prayer and cut off restrictions and limitations. And for those of you who want to say yes to God, I'm opening a door in the realm of the Spirit, a path of faith for you to step onto and step into all that God's got for you. And look, faith 
is not knowing what it's really going to look like. Faith is just, I'm walking this out with you, Jesus. Because if I knew what it was, it wouldn't be faith. So God, we come before you. And Father God, I, personally speaking, I'm fed up. I am fed up with a lackluster Christianity. I'm fed up, Lord, with getting to a certain level thus far and no more. I'm fed up with not walking out the fullness of your will, your plan, and your path for my life. I'm fed up doing things because of finances or because of this, that, or anything else. Father God, from now on, we declare right now that we say yes to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. We say yes to you. We are not going to try and think about how it's going to work, what it's going to look like, what it's going to feel like, what it's going to mean. But God, we just say yes. And in saying yes, we trust you. We trust your goodness. We trust your power. We trust your love. We trust the fact that your favor is wrapped around us. We trust the fact that your presence covers us. We trust the fact that mercy and goodness follow us all the days of our life. We trust the fact that the Holy Spirit indwells us. We trust the fact that we have the authority that's in the name of Jesus to boot anything out of the way that needs to be booted out of the way. We thank you, Father God, that you have given us a place and a position in your family. You've given us a place and position in the government of God. You've given us a place and a position in the kingdom. You've given us a place and a position in salvation and redemption, which allows us to be eternally alive, which allows us to live in divine health, divine prosperity, divine wisdom, to operate from the mind of Christ. You've given us the gifts of the Spirit, the grace of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. You've given us absolutely every single thing that we need for life and for godliness. And we repent because we've lived at a level of life that is so far below what Jesus Christ gave himself to give us. And so, Father, as we repent and as we renounce of that, we come to you with a whole heart. And we say, whatever change you want to make in us, through us, for us, with us, around us, whatever, we surrender to your will. Yes, Lord. Living sacrifices by the mercies of God. But Father, we want to be an ecclesia. Yes, we want to live by the faith of Jesus. Yes, Lord. We want to live in unity with him in such a way that he lives yes, through us. That we want to know how much you know. That we want to have encounters with Jesus Christ. To have encounters with the love of God, to have encounters with the Holy Spirit, to have encounters which change things, which move things, which fill our heart, which take us into where you want us to go. But Father, we declare right now that we are no longer earthbound. Yes, I agree. We are no longer humanism, humanisms, or humanistic, but we are spirit beings, brand new creations in Christ. Seeking to live a brand new life now because of Jesus. So right now, devil, we put you on notice. Every restriction, every limitation, every obstacle, every mindset, every circumstance and situation that you have placed within us, around us, in front of us, or behind us that has uh, refused to allow us to move forward, we take authority over all of those things that are not of God right now, and we break the power of their influence and their significance over the, our lives. We break the power of the enemy. We destroy every weapon that he's used against us in the name of Jesus, because Jesus came to destroy the works of the enemy. So right now, by the authority in the name of Jesus, we destroy the works of the enemy in our lives, and we establish the works of God, the righteousness of Christ, the fullness of God's will. We release the works of God, the kingdom of God, into every aspect of our lives right now, in Jesus' name. And we declare that we are going to live with a, a full-on relationship with Jesus. Thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name.
God, what God turns up in that. And I was just listening, um, as Pastor Zer was, was sharing different things there. And one of the things that at the beginning um, she shared about this turning into an apostolic center and God moving and God doing something. And, and I, I, was so, I was so encouraged because I was thinking to myself, isn't, isn't that the whole meaning of what the word says? You know, bringing people together. But I love the part at the beginning when, when she talked about us turning into an apostolic center. And, and it's about the fivefold. It's just about... It's about Terry standing up and going, this is my calling, this is what I'm going to do because God wants me to do it. And and it's about, you know, showing you whatever he's supposed to do. It's about, you know, um, these wonderful, awesome people here doing whatever they're supposed to do. And it's about us walking and doing, not doing church, but doing life together. You know what I mean? And it's allowing God to move through us so that we can, as, as a body, just go and do what God called us to do. And, and I think... Mean, um, and I don't know about everyone, but I, am, I do get a little bit frustrated sometimes. I love that frustrating annoying because it makes me feel good. Um, <laughs> but I, I think that, that sometimes we've been Christians for a long time, a lot of us. And sometimes we can look at ourselves and go, where are we now compared to where we should be in Christ? Not so much, I'm not trying to bag anyone out, but I'm trying to say that, that there's a plan. And sometimes we've just put up with what's going on in our life. We're not where we should be. But I reckon God got He's just got his hand on our lives. That's why you're here. I, I'm, I'm giving us I hope you don't mind pastors gonna be going to stop playing things. But I'm gonna I'm gonna play um, as you get, everyone that heard my testimony a few weeks back, I, I shared that um, I, I really hundred percent believe I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. I love that your testimony earlier where you said, you know, God showed you some golden rain and, and now you're here and you're seeing it. It's just like so, that's so much what God is about, you know, about what this where He needs us. But not just for us, you know what I mean, but for the other, the other people that are around us. You know, I've met, some, I've met some awesome people in this church. Seriously, I'm so blessed to be a part of it. And, um, yeah, I, I, just, I just want to thank God for that. And also, I just want to say that, you know, when Jesus went to the disciples and He was walking along and He said, Hey, guys, pick your stuff up. Come on, follow me. They just did it. You know, I mean, like, sometimes, sometimes we make things so complicated, like, you know, if, if God turns up, man, you know, oh, I tell you, man, I'm going to move, I'm going to move in the Spirit, we're going to see some stuff happen, you know, people are going to get saved, people are going to get set free, and, you know, when this happens, man, I'm going to do that. When this happens, I'm going to do that. We're going to stop saying when this happens and say, it's already happened. Mm. Jesus already paid the price. Yeah. He already did everything he had to do. We just need to stand up and do something. In prayer today, I know I'm breaking up, so I apologize. But um, I'm really excited. I was pumped up about that. Um, in prayer today, I was saying, Lord, you know, how good is it to come and just be able to come and to freely worship you? Yeah. And I said, Lord, you know, I'm one of these guys that I just I love testimonies. I love, I love seeing God move, and I'm so excited. And one of the things that happened in, in prayer up there today was I said, Lord, you know, you know, I love souls. I want to see souls. I really do. And I just got a test. I just got a text. Sorry, I'm during the service. I know you shouldn't be checking your phone, so I just got caught out. But um, I did get a text, and um, the text said, "Hey, Tom, I know you've been praying for me. I went to church on Friday night, and um, I don't know what happened, but it was pretty awesome." And I'm like, "Praise God! I've been praying for this girl since she was seven. She's now 17. Her family's been through hell, and um, I'm telling you, God is so good." She just said to me in the text, "She goes." Tony, I'm going back to church tonight. And I said, you know, when they ask you, does anyone want to come and give their life to Jesus? You need to put your hand up, walk up the front and say, how good is God? And she said, don't give me none of that time. It's a bit, I'm already freaking out that I'm going back to church. And I, I just, I sent this thing emoji back about hallelujah. And she just said, you've been saying that to me for 10 years. And I said, that's how long I've been praying for you. I said, you know, God can do anything. So just put your hand up tonight, you know what I mean? And give your heart to Jesus. And I just was so encouraged that, you know, this is not funny. We go through life and we want things. We want to see certain things happen. And, you know, some of us want finances, some of us want this, some of us want that. You know, I just want to be walking in the will of God. Yeah. And it's the, it's the seeds we sow. You know, as soon as I sent that text, I was straight away, it was like, the Holy Spirit reminded me, you know, that in an inside an apple, there's thousands and hundreds of thousands of other apples. But we need to share. We need to sow the seed. And I think that um, in this church, I, I sow my seed in, in Bang and I, I won't do it today. But um, about first fruits, I'm in love with first fruits. You know, I've 
be with me just my whole life and just gave when I had to. But um, these days I'm free. So I give because it's an abundance that, that God's given me and I just keep giving back. And this week my wife said something to me. She said, um, she said, Tony, every time I look at the bank account, it, it, it's freaking me out. You know what I mean? Because you know, God's abundance is on it, you know. Um, I'm not trying to say I'm a wealthy person. I'm, I'm a walking wealth, which is awesome. And um, I'm a real estate agent and he wants to sell the house. But um, I just want to say this, that in, in, I'm being serious. And that is that, you know, God keeps on turning up and he keeps on blessing our life. You would, you'd be shocked. If you ever, you know, if you're a good cook and you want to invite me and my wife around for dinner one time to share, we're happy to. But um, let me share this, that honestly, God keeps on up and he keeps blessing our life. And, and honestly, every, every week I've got a different testimony and I'm just so blessed and so honoured that, that God's got me in this place touching my life and, and doing something. You know, so Lord, I just pray that you just bless every single person in this place. Lord, that you give them a testimony. Lord, that you share with them and just raise them up and, and just keep on touching their life as they just keep on surrendering themselves to you, Lord, and following you and saying, well, what is it you want me to do today? Lord, I pray that you would just change and they'd never be the same again. That even as of this moment, Lord, they would walk out of this place different to what they walked in. Lord, that you would just have your way in their life. To a point they'd go, wow, that was my mum. Lord, we ask that you would just touch their lives. That every person in this place would know you in a way they've never known you before. Lord, we give you permission to come and just have your way. Lord, be God. Do whatever it is you want. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Sorry about me right now. There is um, a little stuff on the back table there for David McDonald that's coming. Yeah. Um, outside, everyone's going to come, yeah? Yeah. I'll put you on the spot, yeah. option off tickets because they're free. I think, no, they're not free. They're, no, sorry. Well, <laughs> I should have put you on the spot. They're $6 a person, $110 per couple, but, you know, get excited. We need to be a part of stuff that's going on here, mate. All right? Praise God, there's more food before Shane gets to it. Yeah, I'll eat it. Guys, for sure. <laughs> <laughs>